For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move the House suspend the rules and pass the resolution HRES 835. The clerk will report the title of the resolution. House Resolution 835. Resolution expressing the sense of the House of Representatives that the United States should adopt a national policy for technology to promote consumers' access to financial tools and online commerce to promote economic growth and consumer empowerment. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Burgess, and the gentlewoman from Illinois, Ms. Schakowsky, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and insert extraneous materials into the record on the resolution. Without objection. And Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of House Resolution 835. Mr. Speaker, as chairman of the Subcommittee on Commerce, Manufacturing, and Trade Subcommittee, I have chaired two hearings in our disruptor series exploring FinTech. Over the last year, the subcommittee has examined mobile payments, digital currencies, and blockchain technology. There's no question that this new technology is changing the face of global payments and commerce. The rise of the smartphone has drastically changed consumer behavior when it comes to mobile payments. Checking an online account and transferring money is as easy as checking email on your smartphone. In 2014, 22% of mobile phone users reported making a purchase on their phone. 39% used their phones to make a purchase in a store. Global investment in financial technology ventures tripled in 2014 to 12 billion and increased 67% in the first quarter, the first quarter of 2016. Payment companies and marketplace lenders account for about two thirds of these highly valued startups. On the cutting on the cutting edge of, uh, of this innovation is around blockchain, a ledger-based technology fundamentally based on tr transparency. Blockchain technology holds the potential to disrupt healthcare records management, manufacturing supply chain management, real estate record keeping, international clearing and settlement functions, and even regulatory oversight by government agencies. Peer-to-peer -peer asset transfer online has been a challenge for a number of industries since the rise of the Internet. Blockchain technology has offered one potential solution that many industries could leverage in the future to protect their intellectual property. There is no doubt that blockchain innovations are on the cutting edge today. For every story about the amazing potential applications, there is another story outlining a doomsday scenario. While innovation can be frightening, discovery should be encouraged because the public will never see the benefits without assuming some measured risk. This resolution reaffirms Congress's commitment to innovation. I support HRES 835, and I'd like to thank Mr. Kinzinger and Mr. Cardenas for their leadership on this issue, and I will reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentlelady is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to acknowledge the work of Congressman Kinzinger and Con Congressman Cardenas in bringing this uh, resolution to the, uh, the floor today. Uh, and in the last year or so, fintech, financial technology, has become the new buzzword on Capitol Hill. Finance and technology have long had a close relationship. For decades, banks have been able to send money between themselves nearly instantaneously. Consumers have easy access to online and mobile banking services. But now more technology is coming into consumers' hands. Person-to-person -person payment apps have made check splitting at restaurants much less of an ordeal. Blockchain is being used to send remittances around the world. And the challenge for federal regulators is to understand and adapt to the, this new technology. FinTech does not always involve traditional financial institutions. It has increased the amount of potentially sensitive consumer information being stored and transmitted. If we want innovation to continue and for consumers to trust this technology, we must ensure that data security is baked in. We also need to consider how new technology works with existing rules to prevent money laundering and terrorist financing. These are not easy issues, but they are critical to 
furthering innovation, which I hope will lead to lower costs and better services for consumers. This resolution, recognizing that Congress and federal agencies need to be working on policies that promote the responsible development of fintech. I look forward to working with my colleagues to do just that. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize the author of this legislation, Mr. Kinzinger of Illinois, uh, and recognize him for five minutes in support of this resolution. The gentleman from Illinois is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank the uh, ranking member, uh, Schakowsky, for your, your work on this and your help. Uh, I rise today in support of uh, House Resolution 835. It's a resolution adopting a national policy to promote economic growth and consumer access to financial tours, tools through technology. I introduced this resolution with the gentleman from California, Mr. Cardenas, earlier this year to highlight the importance of supporting a growing industry at the intersection of consumer finance and technology, otherwise known as fintech. I'd like to thank him for joining me to ensure that the United States is competitively positioned to leverage this next wave of technology for the economy and for consumers' benefits. Fintech's leading the charge in taking payments to the next level in terms of speed, convenience, efficiency, and accessibility, and is fundamentally changing the amount of transparency and control consumers have over their information. Fintech startups have created a surge in payment innovation, ranging from new mobile payment options to digital currencies outside of traditional government-issued currency. There are over 2,000 fintech startups and more than a dozen that are currently valued at over $1 billion. Mobile payments revenues in 2016 are expected to surpass the $600 billion mark, and this year 45% of consumers use some form of mobile payments. And with that investment comes new jobs and new opportunities. Given all of this, there's still a host of questions about these offerings that industry and government at all levels must continue to work through. Questions about security, privacy, and consumer protection are important and will guide how public and private entities continue to review and assess emerging technologies. However, potential risks and 20th century silos between government agencies should not hamper innovation in this space. In an age where mobile devices are ubiquitous, consumers are demanding a higher level of transparency and control over their financial information. Due to the proliferation of mobile devices, we have an opportunity to capitalize on an emerging technology that we cannot afford to miss out on. The only question is who's going to lead the way in this process. This resolution sends a clear message that that will be the United States and that Congress supports continued innovation and consumer empowerment. Again, I want to just say thank you to my friends on both sides of the aisle for bringing this up, what I think is a very good bipartisan resolution and a good first step to doing what we need to do. And with that, I yield uh, back the balance of my time. I'll reserve. The gentleman from Texas reserved. The gentlewoman from Illinois is recognized. Yes, and now it is my pleasure to yield to the co-sponsor, co-author of this uh, resolution, uh, Mr. Cardenas from California. The gentleman from California is recognized. And for uh, as much time as he may consume. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank my colleague and friend uh, for giving the uh, time and also for her leadership, my colleague, Ms. Kowski, and also to my colleague, Congressman Kinzinger. Thank you so much for uh, introducing this legislation. It's my honor to work with you, uh, and especially across the aisle on something that we all agree on and realize that this is something that we need to uh, take responsible steps in harnessing here in this country when it comes to uh, the, issues at, the issue at hand. Today, financial service companies are undergoing another profound era of change. In the United States alone, there are 85 million millennials, a generation considerably more open to non-traditional financial services than past generations. This is almost the same amount of Americans who have little or no relationship with a bank. That means no checking or savings account for those people. We also know that there are more than 1 billion smartphones worldwide, with more than 200 million in the U.S. alone. People today have 24 hours a day mobile access to financial services uh, providers, regardless of how far they are from the nearest bank branch. The fintech res revolution can bridge the gap between those who are banked and those who are not. 
Anyone with a cell phone should also be able to save, invest, transfer, and improve their financial experience safely. For example, our society has an unprecedented amount of choices when purchasing or selling products in person and or online. Blockchain technology, the system behind Bitcoin, has the potential to fundamentally disrupt the way we think of not just currency exchanges, but also healthcare, energy, and intellectual property. Of course, every new system must incorporate safeguards against those who want to take advantage of it. Finding the balance between the development of new technology and the protection of our personal information is, is not only necessary, but critical. That's why Rep. Kingsinger and I introduced House Resolution 835, the Bipartisan Financial Technology Resolution. It is time Congress recognizes and encourages innovation while setting the tone for security and transparency. This resolution underscores fintech's ability to improve a consumer's experience when it comes to managing their, finan their finances online. It also states that fintech could help increase financial literacy rates across the U.S. by creating new opportunities for the nearly 25 million households in the United States that are still unbanked. Let it be known, identity theft is a real concern for all Americans at all levels. But the good news is, many within fintech are committed to improving security through increased transparency and verifiable trust mechanisms. Not only does fintech give small businesses and consumers an alternative way to bank, it also offers the possibility of a safer, more convenient financial experience while creating U.S. jobs. Seeing as the United States is the world leader in software development and technology, it is in our best interest to develop a national policy. We must drive innovation, boost economic growth, and ensure the protection of every American's personal information. FinTech not only makes products and services more accessible to the consumer, but it can also make these services more affordable. It's needless to say that FinTech has great potential in our future. We need to do what we have to as government to unleash the creativity, convenience, but more importantly, its responsible and safe environment for these technologies. All the while seeing to it that we stay out of the way of getting in the way of the billions and eventually trillions of dollars that will be manifested through this new industry. And that means jobs, jobs, jobs right here in America. If we don't harness this policy, if we don't work with the industries, if we don't do our job as making sure that we set the tone not only for this country, but for the world, we may find ourselves missing out on this tremendous opportunity on behalf of the American public and the American worker. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on House Resolution 835, the bipartisan FinTech bill. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentlelady from Illinois reserves. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I have no additional speakers and will reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentlelady is recognized. Uh, having um, no additional speakers and just saying that I look forward to the uh, passage of HRS 835, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I'll yield myself the balance of our time. Mr. Speaker, this resolution reaffirms Congress's commitment to innovation. I support HRES 835. I want to thank again Mr. Kinzinger and Mr. Cardenas for their leadership, and I'll yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 835? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Sure. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. I request the yeas and the nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed.